brave. We're staying there. We're not moving. Here it is. Here's the recap. We've heard the voice of God. God's spoken to Joshua, said, be brave and strong. I'm with you wherever you go. We've heard the cries of the leaders. The cries of the leaders are, go, follow God, and we'll go wherever you go. We've prepared. We've sanctified. We've circumcised ourselves. We've watched God part the Jordan, and now we're standing on the banks of Jericho, wondering what to do now. And here's where we're at in, in, in Joshua 6. Starting at, at verse 1, Joshua chapter 6, starting at verse 1. I so badly wanted to go into Jericho this week, and, and I just couldn't. I couldn't get past the first two verses. I couldn't. I couldn't. And so here's, here's what it says. Now Jericho was securely shut up because the children of Israel. None went in, none came out. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, exclamation point, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. Maybe I'm the only one here that's ever felt like this, but man, as I read these two scriptures, I just thought, God, I, this is my life. This is, is the story of Jamie right here. Because of the children of Israel. It wasn't that Jericho was this, just this mighty fortified city. The city was shut up because of the children of Israel. Because of them, no one came into the city and no one came out of the city. How many times have I sat around and said, God... I want to go there, but I feel like because of me, because I want to do this, this thing is shut up. And here's what God speaks to Joshua. He says, look, Joshua, see, I've given you Jericho, and it's king, and it's mighty men of valor. Um, no, you haven't, God. Excuse me, Holy One, Most High. Can we have a conversation here real quick? The city is shut up because of us. No one goes into the city and no one comes out of the city because of us. And now you're looking at me and you're telling me with excitement in your voice, See, Joshua, look what I did for you. I've given you Jericho, and it's king, and it's mighty men of valor. No, you didn't, God. No, you didn't. It's barred up tight. You didn't give it to... Right, here goes, here goes where I am so often, where God speaks to my life and tells me directions to go, and I say, but God, look. God, I can't get there because look at the city. God, I can't get there because look at what's surrounding me. God, I can't get there because look what's surrounding them. God, I can't do it. And God is so positive in his response to me. He's like, look, Jamie, I've given you the community. And I'm like, no, you haven't, God. If you had given me the community, the doors would be open and people would be coming in and coming out. If you had given me the community, then I would be able to walk in with my head held high and everyone would immediately bow down because the, the God of that I serve and what he's doing in my life. If you had truly given, given it to me, man, this is, this is my life. This is, this is us. Have you ever felt like God just missed it, right? God, you just, you just missed this one. God, God, you, 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 you promised a financial miracle in my life, and yet I'm, I'm, I'm more broke now than I've ever been. You just missed it, God. You, you, you just missed this one. You promised that my spouse would serve you and honor you with his life and with her life, and, 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 and God, now they're, they're serving the devil more than they ever have. God, you just, you just missed this one. God, you just, I love you, I honor you, I praise you, but God, you just, you just missed this one. God, you promised me an effective ministry. You promised
promised me that I would reach people. God, you promised me that I, that I would see souls, but sometimes I just feel so useless. God, you just, you just missed it. God, God, you just missed it. God, you promised me victory over this situation. You promised me that I would be an overcomer. You promised me that you would never leave me nor forsake me, and yet now I feel more alone than I ever have. God, you promised me peace and joy in this, in the, in this, in this hard time, and yet I'm so depressed. Why is it, God? Why is it that you're looking at a city that's barred up and you're seeing something that I'm not seeing? Man, God help us. God, you just missed it. Time and time again through Scripture, people have lost hope in their promises with God. The disciples who literally walk with Jesus every day, they're in a boat with Jesus and he looks and he comes. I mean, like, listen, there are a lot of cool miracles. But Jesus wakes up and he says, hey, winds and waves, I need y'all to quit, okay? And they calm down and then the disciples look and they're like, what manner of man is this that even the winds and waves obey him, right? I mean, like, that one just blows my mind, right? The disciples walk with him every day, watch him open blinded eyes and raise people from the dead and feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. And they watch him do this stuff and then they get to his death. In Luke 24, in the early in the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came a certain woman with them and they came to the tomb bringing spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away and didn't find the body and then all of a sudden two men in shining garments stand before them. They were afraid. They bowed their head to the earth. And they say, the, the men say to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but he's, he's risen. And then the disciples, just as God has to do us sometimes, the, 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 the angel of the Lord looks at the disciples and he says, remember? Do, do, do you not remember that Jesus spoke this to you? Do you not remember that this moment had already been foretold? Do you not remember that this was coming to pass because he said it was coming to pass? And saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man and be crucified on the third day. And then what does it say that the disciples did? They remembered that work. They remembered what Jesus had spoken into them. God, it's our life. It, it's, it's the story of our lives it's the story of our walk with Christ when we want to do... Now, there's some of you that have no desire to do anything great. There's some of you that have such a desire to see God work in your life and do something great. And you're saying to yourself, God, I want to, but I just can't because it doesn't, it doesn't look like I'm able to. It doesn't look like I'm capable. God, help us. Our view is natural and limited, right? Isaiah 55, I, I love this portion of scripture. Isaiah 55, it says this, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he's near. Let him return to you and he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts see sometimes we look into situations and we have limited sight on what's happening god looked at jericho and he understand the final victory he had already told joshua be brave he had already told joshua to obey my voice and so he looks at at jordan and he i mean he looks at jericho and he sees the victory in our humanity, so often we need to remember that our sight is limited in the natural view. We don't see the things that God sees. We don't see the victories that God has already placed before us. And so whenever we get frustrated and aggravated and agitated and want to give up and want to throw in the towel, we need to remember that our sight is limited by our humanity. Then God says this. He says, For as the rain come da comes down... And snow from the heaven, and doesn't return there. Water to the earth, and brings forth, and bud, and makes seed, gives seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, 
but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Wow. God's word to your life, the thing that you have been holding on to for so long, the thing that you have been ready to throw in the towel on time and time again, whenever he gives you a word, it is not going to return back to him void of its plan for which he sent it out. It is not going to return back to him without the effectiveness that he wished for it to have. As water comes down to the earth and it feeds the flowers and, and we get bread from that, so is his word. Whenever it goes out, it is going to prosper the thing about which it spoke, right? Some of you need to hold on to that. Some of you need to grasp the thing that God has spoken into you and hold on to it. Then he says this, listen. You shall go out with joy and be led with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth in singing before you, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, it shall come up a cypress tree. And instead of a briar, it shall come up a myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Someone needs to stop looking at the thorns in their life and start seeing the cypress tree that God is trying to raise up. Some of you need to stop seeing the briars in your life and start seeing the myrtle tree that God is trying to rise up in your life. Some of you need to stop focusing on your situation in the natural view and allow God to show you in the spiritual what he's already done at Jericho. Listen, in our natural view, we look at Jericho and we say, God, it's not working. God, you missed it. God, I'm frustrated. That's it. Let's, let's go back. Let's just hang out here, guys. This, this isn't right. And God is saying to us, look what I've promised you. Go. Be brave. I'm with you wherever you go, wherever your feet stand. I'm going to give that to you. And we need to get to a place in humanity, but most importantly, Christianity, that we start focusing on the cypress trees rather than the thorns, right? <sighs> it's time to start looking through the spiritual eyes. It, it's time to start allowing your spiritual man to see things. It, it's time for us to stop focusing on what's here in our hand and instead of focus on what's in his hands, right? <sighs> in the spiritual, you'll remember the things that he has already done. You've heard his voice. He said, be brave. He said, wherever I go, wherever I my footsteps, you're going to give me that. You've already told me to trust you. And so spiritually, in the spiritual, I'm going to walk that out. Some of us need to put on our spiritual goggles and allow ourselves to be seen and our lives to be seen in a way that is truly comparable to the way God sees us and our situation. Man, what are you looking at? You looking at the walls being shut up tight? Because of you? You're looking at the fact that no one comes in and out because of you? You're looking at the fact that there's a mighty army behind those walls ready to fight you? Are you hearing the voice of God say, I have given you this city? I have given you your family. I have given you authority in this area. I see the walls. I see the door. I see the people. But do you hear the voice of God? What is the voice of God speaking into your life? Listen, I, 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 
I don't want to trust my natural ability. I don't want to trust in me and what I'm able to see. I want to trust in the words of God. I trust in a God who holds my future in his hands. I trust in a God that was the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's going to be the same forevermore. I trust in a God in Revelations who says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I trust in a God who has everything figured out for me. What are we looking at? God, help us. God had already spoken to Joshua. Be brave. But do not fear. I'm with you wherever you go. How was Joshua here at Jericho, how was he able to see what God saw and not question what God had already spoken? Because he trusted the words that God had given to him, right? God has given you promise after promise after promise after promise after promise. Open up his word and proclaim those promises in your life. Well, pastor, I've tried that and it didn't work. Maybe you're trying it in a very natural stance. Why not try it spiritually? See, we want things to happen for us for natural reasons. You know, we want to be blessed financially, and, and if we're blessed financially, then we can get out of debt, and we can do this, and then we can do this, and then we can give more. And that's our plan to God. God, if you would just, if you would just help me do this, then we could do this, 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 and this, and it would make my life so much easier, and then I'll be able to do this for you. And I think sometimes God looks at us with a broken heart and says, what, what if... What have I spoken into you? What what are the things that I've said to your life? What is it that I've given you and told you? Why are we at this place again? Stand with me, if you will. Here's what I know. I know there are people here that have a word from God in their heart and their spirit. They know what God has spoken to them. It's been confirmed by men of God, women of God. And you're standing here today looking at the situation and saying, just not going to work. God, I love you. I honor you. I praise you. You're so good. You're so amazing. But you just, you just missed it on this one. Here's my prayer today. That some men and women of God would stop looking at thorns and briars in their life. Stop looking at the walls and the doors and the army and instead would start looking at the cypress trees that God is wanting to grow in your life. And instead some people would start looking at the myrtles that God is wanting to grow in your life. And instead some of us would start hearing the voice of God and saying, God, I want the city. I want this community. The next few verses, God gives Joshua this plan of of how it's going to happen for him to overtake Jericho. I want today God to speak some plans into my life 
and into your life? What, what are you needing? What is it that you're wanting? What is it that you wish God would magically come in and fix? Look at these briars. Look at these thorn bushes. They're, they're wrapping me up. I'm praying today that God would speak some plans into your life. Because here goes where we are looking at everything that doesn't line up with what he said rather than holding on to the hope that he has given wow Father God I pray right now for every person that's in this congregation I pray first and foremost for men and women that don't know you that have come here today because a friend invited them or because they just drove by and they came here today and or maybe they sit on our pews every week and they don't have a relationship with you God I pray first and foremost for them I pray that you would speak to their life that you would help them to see that this is a moment where they can be totally transformed radically different in you. God, that you love them so much that even in their dirtiest, most disgusting moment, you love them enough to die for them. God, I pray right now that you would speak to their life. That they would do as your word says. Just simply confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you shall be saved. I pray for somebody to be brave enough to do that in this place today. And that if they do that, that they would just reach down and pick up a card under their seat and fill it out and say, I gave my life to Christ today or I recommitted my life to Christ so that we could celebrate with them just as you are celebrating in heaven. God, I pray for this house today. This word may not have been for everybody, but it's for somebody. There's people that have given up on a prophetic word that you've given to their life, and they're ready to give up on it. God, today, help them to see that you've spoken. Hold on 